Lord, please bless this thy machine so that I may run more than one virtual machine per graphics card. Please. Please. This NVIDIA news has captured everybody's attention. Virtual machines supported by NVIDIA? Uh, yes and no. I don't really know where to start. I've been doing a whole let's run a Windows virtual machine under Linux for all of our Windows computing needs for like a decade. I mean, some of my videos on that are five, six years old plus. I'm one of the first people to have gotten started on the whole VFIO thing to show how effective it can be and how easy it is. And uh, I like to think that, you know, I helped sort of jumpstart the whole VFIO revolution. But, you know, in the intervening time, um, not really a lot has changed since then. The idea with VFIO and pass-through is that you have a video card that you pass through to a virtual machine. So you can run Linux as a host operating system, and then you could run Windows or even Mac OS or FreeBSD or any other operating system as a guest OS. And actually you can kind of do that with pretty much any host OS. Like if you have a Mac, you can run you know, your Mac operating system on the host. I like the freedom respectingness of Linux and the features of Linux. I also really like FreeBSD. And so the whole idea with VFIO is you run a virtual machine and you don't have to bother doing emulation. I mean, look at how much money and time has been sunk into technologies like Wine and Proton that let you run you know, cross-platform applications, let you run Windows applications on Linux, for example. And uh, we're still not quite there. I mean, it's better than ever, but it's still a uh, relatively, you know, maybe not as high fidelity. Now, I've gotten pretty good about hiding the fact that my Windows machines are virtualized, so I have better luck than most with anti-cheat software. But there is a lot of anti-cheat software out there that's doing really clever things because they think people are cheating through virtual machines. Maybe they are. I, I think that's a little overblown, personally. I think that's just game companies freaking out. But this move by NVIDIA sort of fits in that landscape of, you know, all this VFIO stuff and all this stuff that, that's happening. In an ideal world, you could take one GPU and share it with multiple operating systems, have 3D acceleration with only one graphics card. This driver, this driver change, it doesn't do that. You're still going to need multiple GPUs unless you've got a Quadro with the expensive grid subscription or something like that, uh, if you want to be able to, you know, run a guest uh, with video acceleration and a host with video acceleration. So you're going to need, you know, it could be two of the same GPUs, it could be two different GPUs. I've done lots of guides and how-tos on setting up all that. That's sort of the first misconception. But wouldn't it be nice if you could run a virtual machine and have it use some of the resources on the host's graphics card? I mean, I really think we're behind the curve here on this technology because... CPUs and other hardware supporting that kind of virtualization showed up pretty much immediately after we had multi-core CPUs because it makes sense and it makes sense with peripherals as well and it has shown up really quickly but it's in the server space it's locked behind you know abhorrent licensing and ridiculous fees for being able to do that there do exist GPUs that will support multiple concurrent users at the same time for 3d accelerated workloads you see that in server space for with technologies like VDI virtual desktop infrastructure and I've got two Tesla v100 graphics cards and you know I can run eight copies of Skyrim at 30 FPS at 1080p on those GPUs without any trouble. So why then with a 3090 is it so much of a pain to be able to run, you know, uh, something on the host and something on the guest? The 3090 is definitely powerful enough to do that, right? Well, it turns out that it mostly comes down to software. There's just enough software that's locked behind proprietariness that we really can't do much. The other misconception is, does this enable SRIOV? Because, you know, SRIOV support in silicon for the 3000 series GPUs, that was one of the launch things. And I said, no, that's wrong. I'm sure that, you know, somebody has told somebody else that, but that's not actually true. And sure enough, it's like, oh, let's stuff that genie back in the bottle. SRIOV is not supported, and this driver does not enable SRIOV. So really, what this driver does is it takes away code 43, which is awesome when you try to install a 
you know, driver in a virtual machine. And the fact that it is a virtual machine is not hidden. You're using some hardware acceleration, you know, hard, you know, the CPU labeling is such that it shows up as a virtualized CPU. The installer doesn't exit out. There's also some edge cases around where it would work, but you get a black screen anyway. Those kinds of things are fixed. This driver doesn't care if you're in a virtual machine or not, which is awesome. It's, you know, props to NVIDIA. You know, thank you, Lord Jensen, for, you know, this is your benevolent kindness. It is very appreciated. NVIDIA has also been contributing in a positive way to things like X Wayland and doing other stuff in the open source land. You know, there are open source people that will say, well, what about the binary blob and the driver and the installer and the rough edges around that? Hey, I never expected NVIDIA to be doing this much. They're doing a lot and they're doing a lot with open source. And this driver change is awesome more so for signaling maybe an attitude change from NVIDIA, more so than re-enabling functionality. Because it was possible to work around Code 43 before, you just, you know, you weren't necessarily on, on even footing in terms of, uh, you know, is that okay from a license standpoint? But here's what NVIDIA needs to do to go one step farther. Have you got a 3090? We know it supports SRIOV. Just give us one, just one V GPU right out of the box with the 3090. Like, just enable that. That's all you gotta do. We know it works because if you know where to look on GitHub and that's only really half of what you need, you can actually enable vGPU functionality on non-Tesla GPUs. You know, you follow this channel, it's like, ooh, we jump on those projects a lot to say, hey, look at this. I really hope that NVIDIA doesn't try to, you know, uh, DMCA or stuff the genie back in the bottle because I don't think this is anything that a company is going to use to circumvent these kinds of things for commercial purposes, but for game development and things like that, being able to run an entire simulation under that would be really good. I mean, heck, even Microsoft hasn't really, like the Xbox One X, it's like we need to run developer workloads for testing games and stuff. They haven't figured that out. For game testing, being able to automate a virtual machine, boot up the VM, run the game, run the game with GPU acceleration, that's a big deal. That's a really big deal. And you can do that with this kind of a setup on something like Threadripper Pro. All right, we've given our sacrifice to Jensen and now we get Code 43 done away with, but what does it mean in the larger grand scheme of things? Well, this system behind me is Threadripper Pro. It's an Asus WRX80 motherboard, the 32-core Threadripper machine, and a monstrous 512 gigabytes of memory. It has seven expansion slots, seven. The best you could do on regular Threadripper is like four. Yeah, so this system is a monster system for VFIO, running virtualized workloads and simulation. And for game development and things like that, it's incredible because you can basically save a bunch of you know virtual machines in varying states and run through a bunch of testing and run through a bunch of testing with fully accelerated you know 3d graphics um, we've contributed to projects like looking glass looking glass is a really awesome you know frame buffer forwarder basically where you can you know get full 3d acceleration on that guest virtual machine and it basically copies the video frame buffer from the guest virtual machine to the host it's actually shared memory so there's only there's really only one memory copy going on and eventually because of the nature of pci we may not even have to rely on the cpu to do that copy we may be able to do a direct to gpu to gpu copy because pci express technically permits that in the specification mythological future need to need some documentation on doing that and you know once again it's locked behind proprietariness and lack of open documentation it's like we're we, we're willing We've got the skills, we've got the attitude. There's no documentation. There's also no commercial support because there's money to be made with these features. When reality is that these features have basically become pedestrian. Everybody runs virtual machines. Everybody doesn't run virtual machines with accelerated graphics. This is kind of a crime against humanity. But I am hoping that the Code 43 change signals that maybe in our not too distant future that we'll be able to run 3D accelerated workloads natively without having to jump through a lot of hoops. This change is not gonna let us do that, but it is a welcome change because now you can run multiple NVIDIA GPUs just like I'm doing on my Threadripper Pro workstation. If you do decide you wanna go off script and uh, implement your own hacked up grid solution and sort of take matters into your own hands, well, there's some links below for, for those utilities. Let me know how you go in the forum. Maybe we'll do a follow-up video with a step-by-step -step guide. I've got another video coming up right after this one where I'm going to try to show you how to run uh, Windows applications seamlessly on Linux. This is something VMware Workstation supported like five years ago, and then they just turned off arbitrarily. 
and it's never really been turned back on. Uh, if you use Parallels on a Mac or VMware Workstation on a Mac, where you can seamlessly run Windows applications on a Mac without having you know the Start menu or, or any of that, it's like that, but on Linux. Because on Linux, we've been second-class citizens for the better part of five years, and even though VMware Workstation, which is a paid product, had that feature, they took it out, and they've never put it back, which has been really annoying and sad. But it turns out you can kind of DIY that now, finally, it was also in VirtualBox, but it's been broken in VirtualBox forever. It was also in Cubes, and then it was broken in Cubes when you moved off of Windows 7. Basic, basic features, again, uh, because, oh, there's money to be made. Let's make sure these features are as awful and unusable as possible, because anybody that wants to do 3D acceleration in their virtual machine or have seamless applications or run cross-platform, those are, those are second-class citizens. Uh, anyway, I'm Wendell, this is level one. This has been a, a quick explainer on the whole uh, Code43 Linux driver thing. If you're just getting into the whole VFIO pass-through thing, I've got lots of resources. Many of those resources are very, very old and in need of updating, which I'm working on now. So if you have any really exciting success stories with VFIO you want to share, come to the level one forums because I'd love to see it. Post pictures. Let me know who you are. I'm Wendell. I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.